Sorry I'm late at 8.57. I went into Dan's chat and said hi. He said, Ryan, Gary, I have a question for you. I said, okay, shoot, but go fast. I've got work soon. He said, okay, fine. I won't ask you the question. And then just went off on me for like five minutes. And then at, at the end of it, he had the audacity to say, note to self, when you ask Ryan Gary a question, he doesn't answer. Dude did not ask me a single question. I literally just said hi and then was just getting the, the bejesus kicked out of me. I didn't do anything, man. Anyway, I don't have any anecdotes. Do I have any anecdotes? I don't think I have any anecdotes. I'm trying to remember, did I leave the house yesterday? I left the house to pick up my daughter from daycare. Oh, the Peloton, of course. Even when you don't leave the house, you leave the house. Today was just a, a, a pretty chill day. 45-minute Dennis Morton jam band ride. 15-minute Sam Yo hit ride. Total average wattage it was like around maybe like 198, 200. There you go. We got the who asked out of the way. I'm embarrassed, by the way. I think that I'm not a jam band guy. I'm not a... Uh, I, I can name two fish songs, and the only reason I know them is because... They are on the jam band ride. There's like a couple of songs on that jam band ride that actually I'm like, maybe maybe jam bands are not all bad. You ever hear of the song? It, it sounds like a song Dan would make up by a Canadian jam band band. You ever, you ever hear of a song called Rebubula by Mo? It sounds like a, a, somebody took a track from Mario Kart and then turned it into like a, an electric guitar sort of ditty. It goes hard, though. That can't be real. Dude, it's it's not weird, okay? The song's called Rebubula, the band is called Mo, and the album is called No Doy. Like, that's the most real band of all time. Tell me you've never done acid without telling me you've never done acid. I could tell you I've never done acid while telling you I've never done acid, colon. I've never done acid. But have you done acid? Okay, fine, I've done it. No, I have never done acid. I got some hydrochloric acid in my stomach, though. I don't think I'm built for, uh, for psychedelics. As somebody who's never done psychedelics, I don't think I'm built for psychedelics. It seems like, um, like 98, 95% of people do them, you know, like once. And then they're like, they have like a spiritual awakening. And then they do them like... Uh, you know, once a year or twice a decade or whatever, and, and they use it as part of their, their growth as a human being. But then like 2 to 5% of people do it once, and then it, it uh, completely shatters their psyche and ruins their personality forever. That's, those are not good odds for me. Why are you asking me if I ever went to Chown Hall at, at Queens? You think I don't know that Chown Hall is the, the girls' only dorm? Now, did I occasionally, did I walk across campus to go to the Ban Re cafeteria, which was the cafeteria in the female dorm? Sure, maybe less than half a dozen times the entire time I was at uh, Queens. Most of the time I just went to Leonard. Leonard Hall, of course, was one of the greatest, uh, the sites of one of the greatest stories of uh, my freshman year. We went to dinner on St. Patrick's Day at 4.30 or 5.30. I can't remember. It was early. When it opened up, we had a, a beautiful um, grilled cheese and french fries dinner. Looked out my dorm window like an hour later and the cafeteria was closed down. We said, what the hell happened? Get our copy of the newspaper the next morning. Uh, it was beset at peak hours by drunk queen students who then started throwing food at each other. They started a food fight, and the cafeteria workers said, fuck this, we don't get paid enough for this, so they abandoned their stations. And then the kids got behind the counters and started frying their own shit in the deep fryer. <laughs> and then they, security had to come in and, and clear them out, and then they shut down the cafeteria. It's so I, I was not there, but just reading about it, I was like, this is the funniest thing I've ever at the, especially as an 18-year-old, I was like, this is the funniest thing I've, I've ever heard. I wasn't there. Because I, I, we always ate right when the cafeteria opened. The only thing I did in the cafeteria, it, and I apologize, I'm playing the hits this morning. Um, 
They have those toasters that like you put bread in the top and then it goes through like a conveyor belt and it, it gets spat out the bottom. I had a great idea. I took a, um, a tortilla or a pita and I put it in the toaster to try to make tortilla chips. It made it all the way through the toaster, came out the other side, fresh tortilla chips, pita chips, brought them back. I was a hero, brought them back to my lunch table. Everyone was like, oh, dude, these chips are so good. Look at it. life hack. Although the term life hack didn't exist back then. You're a genius. Like a week later, put a pita into the toaster, watch it go down the conveyor. You're like, Where, where's the pita? Where's the pita? It didn't, it, it's not coming out the bottom. And then I just start to see like billowing smoke from inside of the toaster. And I just booked it. I went right back to the lunch table and just sat down. Somebody else, somebody with more responsibility must have come and, and saved us from the fire. But, and then like, uh, probably like a month later, I was like, <laughs> It's 50-50, right? And then I put the pita in the toaster and then the exact same thing happened. But I, in my defense, that toaster was also kind of bad. I remember that there was a sign next to the toaster that said, please do not put cinnamon raisin bread in the toaster because it causes a fire. So anyway, how did it work the first time? Oh, it's just one of those miraculous things, you know? Can you buy one of those toasters at Costco? I hope so. Hey, can I tell you something? I put um, too many clothes into our dresser that we bought at Ikea seven or eight years ago. Um, it broke the Ikea dresser, and I'm actually excited that it broke because my wife was like, uh, this morning, she was like, hey, you broke our dresser. And I was like, I don't think so. And she was like, well, I didn't break it. And I was like, you know what? That's a really good point. I probably broke it. Um, but then I hopped in the shower. I had a great idea when I got out. I was like, yo, we could get a new dresser at Costco. And she was like, okay, if you want to. And I was like, three, two, two to three percent off. Can I tell you a story? When I was on my 2019 Disney cruise, or cruise, a dad told their daughter that if you don't behave, we won't get to go to the Disney World excursion tomorrow. Then somebody had a heart attack and diverted the cruise itinerary to the point where nobody got to go to Disney and the little girl thought it was all her fault. Point and laugh. I mean, that's just... That's like getting struck by lightning, honestly. That's just bad luck. Do you recommend BioSteel? It's mad discounted in Germany right now. Well, listen, I got BioSteel because I saw it at Costco. And then I checked the nutritional information and like one serving of BioSteel has like a quarter of the calories of Gatorade. Normally I, I would look at that and be like, hey, what's the ingredient list? But the ingredient list of both of these products I'm sure is just like laboratory ingredients. Like, you know, methyl ethyl, stethyl, uh, dash one comma three dash chiral form, open parentheses, it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I, I mean, I think it tastes okay, although today I didn't shake my bottle enough. And I got like, I, I squirted the bottle and I got like a bunch of powder in my mouth. And it tasted a little bit like garbage. But keep in mind, I also, you know, I, I drank a lot of Pedialyte this year. I drank um, the magnesium sulfate 10 gallon drum or whatever that you have to go through before you have your colonoscopy. I think my taste buds like should not be trusted right now. Like, Dan tweeted about Junior Mints, and I said, rare Daniel Bate tweet that I agree with. Someone replied and soul read me. They said, you know when NL likes something sweet, it's going to taste like dog shit. You got me. I love, uh, I love a mint-flavored chocolate. I love a mint-flavored anything, honestly. <laughs> it's an amazing tweet. Okay, can you define a fuddy-duddy? I would say it's someone who is um, very self-serious and not easygoing. I would describe a fuddy-duddy, <clears throat> in, in my personal opinion, oh my god, we won again. It's, uh, it's someone who's like, you know, they, they would go to a restaurant and they might say something like, hey, where is this chicken from? And then the waiter might be like, oh, we get it from an organic farm in Langley. And they'd be like, oh, Langley, huh? I prefer Abbotsford chickens. And you'd be like, what the hell? 
Bro, it's KFC. Like, get a clue. Will the Beast obviously can fit on the squad, but I'm trying to think of, of how we're going to generate any trumpets. And the answer is, there are no trumpets. But I think you buy it... On, listen, okay? Shut the frick up. We might, he might be right. We might just need warm bodies. So we know you're going to go. Well, we probably would unwind the sheep first. Just in case we're not going to uh, have the Doberman's effect here. Yeah, we're, and we're probably not going to. You know what we're going to do then? We're, we're going to embrace that. They're going to sell us up to seven. I'm going to freeze you. I'm going to roll once. We got a tier five, which is in, extremely nice for me. So I'm going to say sell me. Sell me. Tier 5 comes out, tier 6 goes out. Freeze 2 chocolates. Next turn, it would be really nice to get a level 2 monkey and a level 2 Doberman, but we'll see. I was, at this point, we've successfully gotten into the pivot. We're letting the ox ride just for one more round, just as a, as a warm body. And then we'll get the coconut armor running next time. My, this might be the, the, the most seamless pivot I've ever done. This is, at least to a Doberman, this is crazy. Um, let's get crazy stats on the Doberman first. You know what smell crazy in there? I would straight up just add a crocodile. It's just good. I would straight up just add a boar. It's good. Let's have the boar come third. I think we can afford to roll one time. I'm actually, I'm going to sell you. I, and I know that's crazy to lose a, a warm body there, but I'm going to try to get our boar buffed up. We got so much HP. I'm going to play with my HP right here. The, boar, the, the wildebeest has nothing to do long term. Don't break my coconut armor, you piece. This is a spicy one. Never mind. Never mind. We made it. It's a crazy pivot, dude. This was, It's not supposed to be this seamless. Certainly now we can try this and maybe run you like that. I would roll one time. We got to unload this chocolate for sure. Why, why don't you get stronger? And then probably the best thing would be if... Well, you're, you're getting statted so much that I really think the best play is probably to get the boar popping. Why no octopus? Fun unit. I, you don't. You don't want me to say this, okay? I, I know the, the people hate to hear the truth. Fun unit, maybe one of the most overrated units in the game, right now. It doesn't bring me any pleasure to say it. No matter what you have going on in your run, the the only reliable thing you can get in Super Auto Pets is well. There's a couple things. One is you're getting a snail when you didn't lose the round previous. Another one is, no matter how good your squad is, someone will tell you to sell like a 50-50 tier 1 in order to um, replace it with like a 6-8 gorilla on 9 wins. And the other one is, if you ever see an octopus, you already know that they're, they're going to be asking. They're going to be asking you about the octopus. Buff me. Buff me. Oh! Hey! That was an incredible game. The, it just did such a clean, non-psychotic pivot. I can't believe it. And we, honestly, we had great future potential too. Like the boar was going to level up. The, the Doberman was getting crazy. Eventually, we're going to get like double death touch. I was thinking about, you know, it would be like an interesting uh, bit to, uh, to do. I was thinking about this while I was eating a ham croissant. <laughs> from the Kirkland Signature brand today. Not to brag. Executive member, by the way. I don't know if you check the tags. What do you... If you had to do a tier list of the things that ACDC loves about she who shook him all night long, what do you think would be number one? Like, was, are you in love with her because she's a fast machine? That I could take or leave. She keeps her motor clean? Now, that I think is admirable, whether we're referring to cleanliness or her, like, cardiac health. She was the best dang woman that I've ever seen. Obviously, that's close to the top of the list. Can I tell you what might be at the top of the list for me, though, is when she told me to come, but I was already there. 
that seems like that's that's just kismet right there. That's that means you're in sync with one another. That <laughs> telling no lies is a good one. Knocking me out with those American thighs, it, it would be closer to the top than the bottom, I would say. I don't really want the walls to shake or the earth to quake. And I don't, the other thing is I also don't want to be shook all night long. Maybe for like half an hour. All night, that's going to really screw up my next day. I got stuff to do. And yes, make a meal out of me would probably be, well, I don't know. That could be close to the top or close to the bottom. I haven't really thought about it so far. That was an amazing bit. I'd like to thank Kirkland Signature Croissants for inspiring that bit that has been called by many people amazing. Did they sponsor that bit? No, I'm just an executive member and a, a happy customer. Mind you, I've only had my membership for <laughs> 36 hours, but I can't imagine what life was like before it. Any thoughts on Vancouver, Washington? So, uh... I don't know much about Vancouver, Washington, and everything I've ever learned about it was learned uh, under duress against my will. And most of it came from a single conversation with someone I worked with in Korea, where when she came to replace a teacher that worked with us, she said, I'm from Vancouver. And we said, oh, another Canadian. And she said, no, the real Vancouver. Bad first impression. Um, and then she proceeded to tell us, I'm, it, I guess it was just a bad vibe first because you know that she had been through this conversation. Like she had rehearsed like lines in this conversation because she's probably said it many times. But she was like, did you know Vancouver, Washington was actually like founded or consecrated or whatever before Vancouver, BC? And we were literally like, that's cool. And all of us, I'm sure in our heads, were like, who fucking cares? But... So that's that's most that's all I know about Vancouver, Washington. Except also, I believe people travel there. Let's give you some of this. Um, they live there and then they travel to Portland or Oregon in order to get no sales tax on their purchases because it's so close and it's right across the border. I'm not knocking it. I literally know nothing about it except one person that I don't really like that much was from there. It's not not the city's fault, necessarily. <laughs> I'm not thrilled with my tempo on this one right now, but okay. We, we really want to get a level up next time. We want to start building the scalers. This is, this is not an ideal situation. It's literally the same circumstances as last run. No offense, you literally don't know what you're talking about. So I guess some offense. Last time, we got the Doberman on the early level up. Well, here's how they're functionally the same. Well, they don't say literally. You got an infinite amount of words that you can use to describe things as accurately as possible. Putting, just writing misinformation and then putting three question marks after it condescendingly. Your tape-to-tape -tape gameplay made me hockey-pilled. Unfortunately, as a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, are there any positives to this? I mean, there, there is... You might... A lot of people... That's a great octopus. Will not understand this, but if you're a hockey fan, you will understand this, okay? It's actually better to be a Columbus Blue Jackets fan this year than it is to be a Vancouver Canucks fan. Because you, you were the fucking worst. Which is great. If you're gonna be bad, you wanna be the worst. And the, the Blue Jackets are unfathomably bad. Your season as a Blue Jackets fan is like equally painful to my season as a Canucks fan, but your worst, you have the best chances of winning a generational talent in the draft lottery, and we're like seventh worst. So what, you got, you got like six less wins than us, but every time we win, the whole fan base is like, I wish we would have lost that one. It doesn't, because we're not going to make the playoffs anyway. You just got Pedersen? That shit was six years ago, idiot. <laughs> and we picked fifth. We got him in the fifth position. This is like Pedersen's fourth season or something like that. You just got Johnny Goudreau. You basically, you, you got a... a, a amazing playmaking center, not to mention an amazing sniper. Literally, you know why you got both of those players? is Because Columbus is in the United States, 
and uh, both Winnipeg and Calgary are in the Canadian prairies. So congratulations. You really attracted some, some great talent by virtue of having lower taxes on a federal level and not being a desolate frozen wasteland that inspired Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back. So I'm listen, we had solidarity. I was there with the Columbus fans. We were shaking hands and saying we're all dog shit until you tried to be like, no, actually, it's harder for us. Shut the fuck up. Good Lord. Can't you, can't you just let us be friends without trying to put a, a barrier between us for no reason? Actually, my suffering is more noble. Okay, well, congratulations. I mean, I, I thought previously I liked Columbus, even though their uh, mascot is, what, a cannon or a weird little bug with his eyes bulging out of his freaking skull? Then I forgot. For a say, you know what? For years I've forgotten. Oh, right. It's in Ohio. I should hate that team. Go back to watching the most storied college football franchise of like the past 30 years and defining your personality by being like, you know, oh, hey, at least we're not Pennsylvania, okay? Leave the hockey to the people who know what they're talking about. Okay, I'd like to apologize to, to the people in Ohio who caught strays. I know Pen Pennsylvania's better though. I know that. You know that. Everyone knows that unless you're from Ohio. I mean, come on. Would you rather have Pittsburgh and Philadelphia or Columbus, Cincinnati, and Cleveland? What's the best of them? Cleveland? Cincinnati? We, we put chili on our spaghetti? Even people from Ohio can't agree on which one's the best. Okay, no, yeah, okay, I'm not, listen, I'm not just saying Ohio is one of the states in the union that's like closer to the bottom than the top. I mean, at least it's not Indiana. Like the only reason I even know a city in Indiana is because they have a NASCAR race there. Can you imagine that being, <laughs> it's way too far. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of great things going on in Indiana. Like, like housing prices or something, but... But I'm, I'm sorry to say, I basically, I know two things about Indiana. There's one of them is like they have a NASCAR race and the other one is that Peyton Manning lived there for like, you know, 17 years and then got out. And it's next to Illinois, which I'm not trying to make enemies out of like everybody in the Midwest, but at least has Chicago. No matter how bad your city is, it'll never be as bad as Brampton, Ontario. I mean, Ontario is like... it. Canada is, is different than the United States. You know, we have less provinces. I'm not sure if that's been mentioned uh, a few times as of yet. So we, several of our provinces have like multiple states identity wrapped up in them. Like Ontario is simultaneously like New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Like it's, it's, it's got like 10 states. It's North Dakota. Once you get up near like the Hudson's Bay, Nebraska, it's Michigan once you get down into like, you know, southwestern Ontario. BC is like Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, Wyoming, like all wrapped up in one another. I don't know if we really have a Florida. I got to think about that. What would be Canada's Florida? I mean, Newfoundland is kind of like our Florida, I guess. Like, if I saw a headline that started, like, a man in Newfoundland dot dot dot, I'd be like, I'm about to read something a little crazy. If they're going to lead with that, then there's... I'm about to see... I mean, like, Newfoundland, when I think... And this... I actually envy it, because BC has no... Uh, let me rephrase. Vancouver, as of right now, has no, like, cultural footprint, except um, moving here because the weather is nice, and then, like, complaining about the price of everything. But Newfoundland is kind of crazy. When you go there, you you want to get uh, screeched in. You drink some moonshine and you kiss a fish on the lips. And they say, now you're an honorary Newfoundlander. They also, I've mentioned this before too, but they also have a holiday called the Mummers. I guess it's not a holiday, but like a ceremony. So one night a year, everybody dresses up um, in like costumes of the opposite sex and then goes around to their neighbor's houses and just gets hammered. Wait, they do that in, in Philadelphia, too? It sounds based. It sounds kind of... sounds like a good way to meet your neighbors. 
It's probably better to meet your neighbors for the first time over a few glasses of, uh, of screech than it is to be like, oh, your fence is like three millimeters over your catchment or something like that. And I'm going to take you to small claims court. What does NL know about Wisconsin? Um, it's the theme song to that 70s show. Green Bay is there. Yeah, they think they're the America's cheese capital, but actually everybody knows it's Vermont. They just don't want to tell them. Um, and then also, they like you could order like a, uh, a a cocktail that's supposed to be served in a martini glass. You could be like, hey, can I have a vermouth martini? They will serve it to you uh, in a highball glass. It'll have four shots of vermouth in it and a black olive, and it'll be a dollar seventy-five. That's that's my my preconceived notions about Wisconsin, a state I've never been to. How about Rhode Island? Listen, I'm not going to do this for every state in the union. Rhode Island, I'm making a special case just because of the fact that am I the only person who realizes that that state is not a fucking island? Isn't it it's peninsular, right? It's not even peninsular, it's just kind of like it's just a it just juts out. It's just land. It doesn't even jut? You have to understand, I'm not really knocking it. It's not, you know, there's there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, but like, coming from Canada, which is my frame of reference, it definitely seems weird that you could drive through in the Northeast, like, 11 states in half of one day. That's madness. Now, probably, if you're from Europe, you could drive through, like, 11 countries in 12 hours or something like that. So you're like, what are you talking about? That's not weird at all. But at coming from a Canadian frame of reference, which is not necessarily, like, what should be the norm, but it is for me, it seems nuts. Because, like, if you drive for 10 hours from Vancouver, like, your ass might only be in Burnaby, depending on whether or not we've had 0 0.5 millimeters of snow that day. Yeah, like, I, I saw people saying, like, Connecticut should annex Rhode Island. And I was like, bro, who's telling all these people from Connecticut that their state is that noteworthy? As far as I'm con concerned, like, every state from the Atlantic Ocean to New York should just be Maine. We don't need this Connecticut, Vermont, like, New Hampshire. I, I barely even remember that it existed. That's just one big, like, little slice of pizza on the map to me that should be Maine, in my opinion. Based on absolutely nothing. If you were a drug, would you be an upper or a downer? It's a good question. <laughs> it's actually not a good question. It's kind of a, a fucked up question. I don't know. I feel, everyone's saying upper, but I feel like I'd be a downer. I don't feel like, I, I mean, yes, do I drink one cup of coffee every day? Yeah, but I like, I don't think I'm a stimulant guy. I guess I could be like a mild upper, like I could be caffeine or something like that. You would be CBD? Why? Because I don't do anything? Why? Because people insist I change their life, but actually I have no effect whatsoever? Sorry, sorry to me for that one. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to myself. Dude, I was laughing so hard at that Lemmy. I don't know if, if I'm getting Twitter stalked. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. But that Lemmy clip where he's playing Kingdom Come Deliverance. Oof. Listen to me, Al. Listen carefully. Take the sword. And from the future. Listen to me, I'm from the future. I'm from the future. Listen to me, Al. I'm not your dad. I'm from the future. We have something called computers. In there, you'll find something called electricity. Listen to me, I'm from the future. I'm not your dad. I knew your dad. I'm from the future. This is called a key. Put it in the little slot, turn it. It'll make a loud noise. That means it's switched on. It's called a motor car. And he, he just... It's the, the dad talking to the son. Listen, I'm from the future. I'm from the future. I'm not your dad. I knew your dad. 
Go inside. You're going to find something called a computer. Inside is something called electricity. <laughs> it's just so... It's so good. This guy is eating. Someone should give him his own show. He's got a, he's got a real eye for jokes. Anyway, I'm going to go for... <laughs> I'm going to take the hippo. I don't know what I'm going to do here. This is not good. It's all falling apart. <laughs> Nah, man. Nah, nah, nah. Well, okay, listen. Moose me, donut hippo me, and then pray you don't get tier ones. Oh! Okay, I don't know what we're gonna do about a buffalo, man. Like, I don't think this guy's sticking around. If he is, it's gonna be based on the capybara. Nah, it unfreezes anyway. <laughs> Oh, no, that's a strong squad. All right, lethal, huh? I've been waiting for an opossum for like 10 rounds, too. All right, well, you know... <laughs> Honestly, your ass is gone. Your ass is next, so don't get too excited. We really need... To, the only way we're making it out of this one is, is incredible hippo. Oh, the misery. <laughs> that would have been my level three. I was on the Canucks subreddit. This is what it's like to be a Vancouver Canucks fan this year. People are shooting strays, okay? So we have a, an in-arena experience, you know, that's not very good right now. There's Sweet Caroline, bop, bop, bop. Everybody clap your hands. We're doing the noise meter like 20 times a period. Um, anyway. There's a guy that comes out, his name is Crazy P. He's like a middle-aged man, maybe he's in his 50s. He wears a Canucks jersey that says Crazy P. He's employed by the arena, and he comes out with a big drum and goes like, Hey, Section 105, go crazy! Dun, dun, dun. And people were going off on Crazy P. They, first, first off, the people were like, the in-arena experience is bad. And I'm like, I agree with that. But also, I bet if you're like eight, which is the target audience for this stuff, it goes crazy. Like, I'm not, regardless. Then they're like, yeah, I'm so sick of like hearing the same songs over and over. And then they just started going off on Crazy P. One guy said, why does he look like a meth head? And then somebody said like, yeah, when you consider that our city is known for the downtown east side, it's terrible optics to have somebody like Crazy P hyping up the crowd. And I'm like, he's literally just a guy. Like, other people do heroin and fentanyl and meth, and then Crazy P's getting cooked over it just because he's, like, old and skinny. It's crazy. I don't think he's, like, a, you know, Mozart when he comes out with his drum and is hitting it, but people were literally, like, lighting him up. What do you mean it's bad optics that there's a skinny guy at the hockey game? What would be good optics? Like, an incredibly well-dressed realtor? with a leased BMW and a $900 haircut? Like, is that the Vancouver image that, do, that should be out there? Wearing a, an $8,000 Burberry coat with $72,000 of credit card debt? That's, that's what you're looking for? It's, when he said it was bad optics, he, I'm, Lord forgive me, I was almost about to post. What do you mean bad optics? He's literally just a dude. He didn't do anything except hit his damn drum. <laughs> I, just, I don't want to. I didn't think I would be out here defending Crazy P because I didn't think anybody would be coming at him like that hard. He says bad optics. He's not even that skinny. He's literally just a guy. I mean, that's what like people were saying. He looks like he's like a. He uses intravenous drugs. I'm like, what? He's literally just like a man. The rats do go hard, though. I do believe that there are rats in Rogers Arena. I've never seen one, but... <laughs> I've seen... <laughs> seen rats around the arena. I, I think you did. Look at the size of that arena. Look at the egress. I think there's no doubt that there's probably rats in that arena. But I'm like, I, you know me, I'm kind of like pro-rat. Not, not in the sense that I'm like, oh, I love rats. But like, I don't... 
when I see a rat, I never assume like it's necessarily a failure of like sanitation. I'm always like, bro, they're rats. What do you want me to do? Like, I can't be held responsible. It's okay if there's, there's one rat in the kitchen. For a dollar, choose rats or crazy pee. Well, like, <laughs> after everything I've said, you might think that it's the, it's it's crazy pee with, with a bullet, but... I mean, at least, like, the rats... I'm not really annoyed by the rats unless they're, like, you know, running around my shoes. Crazy P, if he's in even the vicinity of you, like, you gotta cover your ears because he's gonna be smashing the shit out of that drum. But I think I'd probably still take Crazy P in the whole scheme of things. This round goes kind of crazy. And the rats aren't doing drugs. Shut, shut the fuck up, okay? Crazy P is literally just a guy. He might do drugs, but that's like beside the point. As long as it doesn't affect his ability to do his job, which is banging a large drum when the Canucks are down 6-0. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's his business. Son of a bitch. You're not wrong. I'd probably be on drugs if I had to do that job. You think Crazy P is like a true believer? When we're down 5-1 to the Detroit Red Wings three minutes into the second period, do you think he's like, I'm so excited to go down into this section of people who paid like 300 bucks per ticket and go, hey guys, dung, dung, dung. Like, he's probably like in the bathroom right before the, the whistle goes off. Like, I can't fucking do it tonight, man. I can't fucking do it. No, you could do it. You could, yeah, I could do it. I could do it. I'm a legend. I'm crazy P. Some of these people need hope. They're not getting any entertainment on the ice. Let's give them some entertainment off the ice. They're here to see me. You're a star, P. You're a star. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's like the, the guy at the Blue Jays games who used to walk down the aisles and go, Ice! Cold! Beer! Any Torontonians here? Anyone know the ice cold beer guy? He's he's an Ontario legend. He's really a Toronto legend. There's there's ice cold beer guy. There's Xanta. Do they all do drugs? I would definitely say Xanta probably has a history of some drug use, if I had to guess, and maybe some other stuff too. Man, I'm getting my ass beat up. <laughs> Whatever happened to the green men at the Canucks games? I think they got asked to not come back. Is That's my understanding of the green man uh, lore. Literally not even trying. Bro, I'm trying my hardest. I look at this buffalo. He's freaking huge. What, are the, what were the green men? They were two guys in those like, those suits. They're called like morph suits, like mocap suits, but they were completely green. This predates the it's always sunny green man, by the way. And they, they had seats right next to the visitor's penalty box. So, like, whenever someone on the enemy team would get a penalty box, they would, like, get up on the glass and go, like, la, 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 And then, like, they started doing, like, co coordinated dances and stuff like that and, like, doing handstands and putting their dick and balls up against the glass and, like, grinding on the glass and stuff like that. Yeah, eating... Frozen waffles and then throwing the the waffles into the into the penalty box. <laughs> that was kind of sick. In many ways, I think they probably inspired Crazy P. You'd be like an unwashed pianist. Also, I can't believe people are like mad at Crazy P for looking like he might be on drugs, even though there's like no. Uh, you know, proof of it, uh, or because the thing is, everybody in the fucking arena is hammered anyway, except for like little kids, and they they got a sugar high. You'd have to be on drugs to watch this team. I looked up Crazy P online. Multiple run-ins with the police for drug offenses. No, he, th this is a lie, probably. If I had to guess. <laughs> My expectation is that you are propagating misinformation on the internet. Yeah, are you thinking of Master P?
Plus, you're you're not wrong. There's probably a lot of people out there named Crazy P. So. Also, like, look, he's never done drugs as I've been watching. Am I supposed to be privy to someone's like entire life just because they bang a drum at the Canucks games? I have not seen the leaked pictures of Modoc from Ant Man Three, but I I meant what I tweeted last night. I think it's a, a, I, and I people are gonna own me for this one, but I think they're washed, man. I said it, you know, back in the Infinity War through Endgame, which is admittedly like only three movies, but when they were at their peak, I was like, they never miss, but one day they're gonna start to miss. And it started with Disney Plus. WandaVision was good. Watching the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I was like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck? And then they they started missing. They they were like two hits and a miss, two hits and a miss. Then the movies, it was like, it. I even listen. No one's gonna think that I'm a. People are gonna say that I didn't have this take, but I did. When I watched Shang Chi, which was very well liked, as even as a Marvel fan, I was like, yeah, it was like good, but so what? Like it's. Black Widow, I, I did not like at all when I saw it. And then Eternals, the reviews were so bad I didn't even see it. Thor, Love and Thunder, the reviews were so mid I didn't even see it. I will see Wakanda Forever because it's on Disney Plus now. But I was like, man, it, it felt like this was like the, the turning point. It's like Ant-Man 3 is going to be like... If, if it is a return to form, then I'm back. I'm back on the Marvel train. If it's more in line with the Eternals, then I might be... I mean, the, the spell might be broken. Wanda Maximoff no longer has control of my cerebral cortex. And it seems... I mean, it has like a 53 on Rotten Tomatoes. And I mean, those movies are designed to be likable, which is what Rotten Tomatoes is all about. It's like, is this movie good enough to eat popcorn to and not fall asleep? And it's like, whoa, 98% of critics said yes. This movie's a 9.8 out of 10. Down a thousand chatters. If any, I sh I'm up a thousand chatters because I've insulted the Marvel films. I'm sorry to the sloth here. I'm very sorry to the sloth. And the thing is, I'm a Marvel guy, too. At least I, I have been, you know, over the past, like, five years or something. You should start a trend of opening hockey cards. I have regressed, um, morally speaking, to the, uh, roughly, I would say, like, a 17th century Puritan is essentially where I am uh, in my life right now. I uh, think that anything fun is not okay. I look, you know I'm very, uh, I'm anti-gambling. Maybe very is not the right word. But I, I also, I'm like anti-sports cards now too. But mostly because like, I think it can be fun. But I also think that like some people when they go into it a little too far, it's basically just like bad gambling. It's like gambling. If, if you're into it for the collection, because I, I collected sports cards as a kid and I've opened sports cards as recently as probably like, I don't know, three years ago. If you're like, oh, I love this card, or like, oh, I want to get all the rookies uh, from my favorite team for the last five years or something like that, I think that's great. But if you're just like mindlessly like, Bzzz, oh, um, uh, Matty Beignet's uh, rookie card. Bzzz, oh, that's a, one, uh, that's a one of 500, um, Jonathan Huberdeau with a game-worn jersey. Bzzz, like that, I think it's just another like, you know, hard line to the dopamine center of your brain. But the, at least with gambling, like when you put a hundred bucks on the roulette table, you know, you lose, you lose, you win, they give you money. When you win on the cards, you get cards, and then maybe you could turn the cards into money, but I feel like a lot of people just end up being like, hey, I got like a, a $200 uh, rookie card over there in my closet, and then like, you're just going to die like someday, and that card's still going to be in there. It's like a, it's a dopamine shortcut, I think. I'm not anti-sports cards. I think sp sports cards are cool. But like, I think it's cooler if you're, you know, like, I don't know, everyone's gonna hate me. 
I think it's cooler if you're like, you know, 10 years old and you get like, you know, a few packs of sports cards and you're like, holy cow, I got a card of my favorite player and you don't really care that it's worth like 30 cents. I think it's less cool when you're like, oh, I'm getting like, um, like this online site is doing a group break and my favorite team is the Winnipeg Jets, but the Jets were already taken. So I had to take the Dallas Stars. It's like, no, you could have just taken like nothing. I guess. I mean, maybe you could get like a, a high skin in game worn or something like that. Or who knows, like a Jason Robertson, like elite acetate. But like anything, I think as long as you're in it for a, a hobby instead of like a, a fix, I think it's okay. But I'm also just one guy. What's your thoughts on Mercedes going back to the all black livery? I've been a big proponent of that since since they switched. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Mercedes in the Formula One sport. The sport known as Formula One. It, it actually reminds me, there's a, a dad that comes to daycare pickup. And uh, because his child is in daycare, it's not just a hobby for him. He's in it for the lifestyle. And the, probably like the first 10 times I saw him, he was wearing a, um, a Williams racing hat. And I was like, man, this guy's like a real fan of F1. Because that, from what I remember, that team is god-awful. So he's like a true F1 head. But then recently, I've, I've been paying more attention to his hats. And I think he just is a fan of the sport. You, like, you know how like Rob Lowe wears the, the NFL shield on his head? When he's the guest of Roger Goodell? That's, uh, this guy, sometimes he shows up, he's wearing like a, a McLaren hat. Sometimes he shows up and he's wearing a Williams hat. Sometimes he's got a Ferrari hat on. I think he's just into the, he's into the engineering side of the sport. You gotta respect it. Wait, what team is partnered with, um, with Steak and Kick? Is it, um, not, is it Alfa Romeo? I was gonna say Aston Martin. It is, it is Alfa Romeo. That's so funny. You could talk to him? Yeah, but I don't know anything about F1. What am I going to say? Oh, I watched Drive to Survive Season 1 two years before the pandemic. That's a long time ago. That was in the lifting arc. Hey, how's Daniel Ricciardo doing? Oof, oof, oof. Has he won the champion, the, the driver's championship yet? Oh, well, that's okay. I'm sure when he pivoted to uh, Renault, they probably won the constructor's championship, right? Oof, oof, oof. Just say Hamilton is overrated. Um, what if he thinks I'm talking about musical theater? And don't let me catch you saying still true, okay? Have some respect. Hello, Daniel. My favorite VTuber. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Wait, wait, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's 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 wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I, I, what's wrong? I don't get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wednesday edition of the show. Super excited to be here. My first time here. <laughs> you you could call me V Dan, capital V D A N, spam and chat. I've gotten a lot of questions about your VTubing, Daniel. Now I you you probably find yourself saying, "Why did you get questions?" Well, guess what? It looks like you and I have the same question. <laughs> but is this the is this the start of? Wait, hold on. Kate, what did you write here? Chat don't know, mommy's getting hot at the computer chat. Doing something on holy chat sat back while she's eating it. She be pooping it. Now she putting the onion down slow. Ooh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, it's sort of, look. You keep working on that one. I think you're going to make all your dreams come true. It's not pooping, it's popping. 
I thought pooping made more sense because didn't the onion give you like a fiery poop? Anyway, Daniel, I just have to ask. Everybody wants to know. Is the VTuber avatar step one? Step two is you just feed chat GPT-3 into the VTuber. And then you like go retire on the on the Cayman Islands somewhere. Just completely start doing 24 hour streams, completely automate the, the process of streaming. Just make sure you keep the, uh, the safety filter on. I did see that post about the Bing chatbot being unhinged. Like somebody asked it, uh, where is Avatar the way of water playing? And then the Bing chatbot kept being like, well, it doesn't come out until next year. You have 11 months until it releases. And then they would ask it like, what is your, or what, what year is it? And it would be like, it's 2023. Then they would be like, what's the release date of Avatar The Way of Water? And it's like, oh, it's November 22nd, 2022. And they'd be like, Are the, is Avatar Way of Water in theaters? No, Avatar The Way of Water is not coming out for 10 months. My phone says it's 2023. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's possible that your phone might have uh, malware or otherwise need to be replaced. And you're like, this is the, what I want to see posted. Why is everything that's posted about... Ch I mean, maybe it's right more than it's wrong. That's one possibility. But it seems like everything that's posted is all like, whoa, I asked, I asked chat GPT-3 what 80 divided by 4 is and it said 21. It's almost over for us. There's never like... Hey, chat GPT uh, three. Um, what what time is it? And it's like, hey, go fuck yourself. Get a clock, asshole. Like, there, there's got to be posts like that. I wouldn't know because anytime I try to use it, it says, uh, "Oh, we're at like peak hours. Please come back in thirty years." Yo, ox, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese, salt and pepper, ketchup, mayo on a roll. Yes, sir. Can I say something that might get me banned from New York? <clears throat> How good could the delis be? They're always talking about the delis as if it's the only place in North America that has sandwiches. Some of the stuff that I see done the Aki way, I'm like, I bet that's pretty tasty, don't get me wrong. Legit good as hell. Pastrami, baby. I mean, we do not have deli culture here. I would love to be able to walk into like any corner store and get a good sandwich. That does not exist here. All right, everyone's telling me I'm wrong and I should go die. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, I guess fine, fine. Come to think of it, I think I would... You know, honestly, I've decided to go back on what I said earlier. I think it would be a lot of fun to have delis in my... In my, I think it would be a lot of fun to have delis in my city, personally. Also, is like Arizona iced tea, like the... Is it the national drink of New York? Is it the, 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 the civic drink of New York? Kinda? Alright, well, I'm not gonna be a hater about it. No, I've decided to be a hater. No, I don't have the energy. <laughs> it's, just, it's just easier to be like, wow, that looks good. The sandwiches do look tasty. Four, four dog, two, two dog, six, five ox. Hating is tough, man. Yeah, because the, the thing is, if you're ever like speaking positively about something, if you stumble over your words, people go, oh, he's like so overcome with emotion that he can't even keep his thoughts straight. If you're hating on something and you say like fruition instead of fruition, people are like, this idiot went on an absolutely unhinged rant and mispronounced a single word halfway through, completely undermining his point. Would you be down to money match Hikaru Nakamura? I would say it's a safe bet if he's okay with losing his money. Oh, 
Are we talking about chess or super auto pets? In chess? No, God, no. Are you crazy? Now, in this unique world, it's possible that the leveling the shark faster is the right play. You gotta factor in the fact that we have four HP as well. We can afford to look long-term. Orca, Panzer Dragoon Orca. Actually, Orcas, I, I'm guilty of thinking it's too late for the, the Orca, but then I realized we could just throw chocolate cake on it anyway. I'm also guilty of thinking that my salsa... Um, sorry, I'm not gonna, we're done with that. Good snipe, I'll give you credit on the snipe. Oh, I'm, I'm a big Panzer Dragoon guy. Been drinking it for years. I, uh, this is not a joke. I've always been a snob, okay? So when ninth grade finished, maybe it was 10th grade, but I was like, I'm gonna go buy a video game at the Electronics Boutique. How dare you. I had been reading a lot of reviews. I've been informing myself about the purchase. I, um, I decided to purchase a game that official Xbox magazine gave a 93 out of 100. Panzer Dragoon Orda. I said, this will keep me busy all summer vacation. Four hours and $70 later, I said, that's it? That's the end of the fucking game? I played it through uh, about 10 times to get my money's worth. And then I, uh, like a week later, went back to EB Games and bought World Series Baseball 2003. And I took the New York Yankees to the, to the World Series on default difficulty. I'd say probably like, you know, 10 seasons in a row, if I had to guess. It's a strong looking squad here. I, I gotta give you some credit. It's a strong looking squad. And yet, you're only gonna draw. That's gotta stink. Point wins give dopamine. Yeah, but have you ever considered that if you uh, gamble at all, you deserve to feel bad? It's a, it's a moral failing. Or did, were you not raised in the same sort of environment that I was? <laughs> Does that include Kinder Eggs? Don't even get me started on Kinder Eggs, man. You know how many Kinder Eggs I've, I've opened over the past six months? Kate could, could destroy me right now. It, the average Kinder Egg... I feel like when I was a kid, you opened it up and it was like a two-piece puzzle. Now I open it up, it comes with like seven steps of instructions, like an Ikea uh, instruction manual. Some of them take me 10 minutes to put together. Because I'm looking at these little... The, the instructions are also printed on a postage stamp. So I get out my microscope and I, I slot it in and then I like switch to the highest caliber lens. And then it's like, hey, you got seven little identical pieces of plastic. Um, take the one that has, uh, it's got a little notch in the northeast corner. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it into another piece of plastic. And as you're doing it, you're going to rotate them both like this. You're going to go, hmm, hmm. And then you're going to, there's a, get your tweezers out. There's a little microscopic sticker. You're going to take the sticker like this and you're going to just place that in the middle like that. And then... You're gonna, we've included a safe crackers handbook. What you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna go, you're gonna see the safe we included. We're gonna have you put the stethoscope up to the safe and you're gonna go until you hear where the pins start to fall into place. You're gonna crack the safe. Inside of there will be a hat, which you can place on your astronaut. And then I hand it to my child and she goes, what is this? And uh, she touches it with the tip of her finger and it explodes. I am over it, man. What whatever happened to just you open it up and it's like a keychain? Now you gotta have a mechanical engineering degree to put together a, a Kinder egg. Or sometimes you open it up and it's just a ring with a piece of paper. Anyway, sorry. I'm... All of this is me projecting because I feel stupid every time it takes me forever to put them together. They're actually not that complicated. And my wife does them in like 45 seconds. <laughs> it's true. It is. It's, it's the truth. 
That one was made up by the writer's room. Without looking at the instructions. I, it's true. I mean, I told my wife every time I fail at putting... Well, I fail is... To succeed but take way longer than expected to put together a kinder egg. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, genuinely... I think my verbal intelligence, it, and I'm, I'm not trying to be braggadocious, I'm trying to insult myself. I think my verbal intelligence is legitimately like 95th percentile plus. My shape intelligence is actually like, if I'm being honest, and this is how you know it's not braggadocious, if I'm being honest, I actually think it's on the level of probably like the average sixth grader. Maybe maybe fourth grader but kids in the fourth grade they're like pretty small <laughs> not that smart <laughs> but i think sixth grade i'm not talking about a sixth grader that like grew up on a farm or their dad's been like a you know the professor of engineering at the local college i'm talking about like you know your average kid that you know was raised by their ipad okay don't insult me that much freeze the lettuce Capybara is gonna level up. Cappy doesn't know that the clownfish and me do it in my van every Sunday. They think she's at the shop, but she's on. And, and, and Cappy doesn't know. Cappy. What what happened to my brain? Oh, go off, Kings. Thank you for the raid. Hey, I I know you're um, friends with Justin. I linked Justin to this incredible joke last night that I saw on Twitter because I'm a millennial and that's how I share content. Um, and, and he didn't respond at all, which I thought was kind of like insulting to me. Well, there's two, okay? So there's one here that's um, hanging out with my favorite coworker and it's an old man in a Trader Joe's uniform that's showing a clip from Family Guy on his phone to the person that's filming the video. And then, so just give it a second here. This media could not be played. Okay, just give me a second here. I'm opening it in an external tab. I think it might have been deleted. Oh no, here it is. And he, he pans to the guy and he's laughing and he, he says he just keeps doing it. <laughs> but then there was uh, this one really got me and I'm not going to put the video on the screen. So that's not going to be much help. But let's see this. I've been having a lot of sexual escapades as I let you know, like having little adventures with some freaky Chicago girls. And I've come to the realization I've been talking to one that I don't think pegging is necessarily that gay. So this one, it, it, that's the joke, and while he delivers the punchline, he falls off the stage and smashes his solar plexus into a table. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm sure it's deliberate, which makes it an incredible bit. I couldn't believe that Justin didn't at least give me a Lamau or something like that. Or like a, an LOL. I, the, you know what? I actually haven't looked. Maybe he did respond to it. Let me see. Nope, nope. No, he's just talking about the steak that he cooked. It hurts a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. It's not like a huge problem, necessarily. It was just like... I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, even a common lull would have sufficed. <laughs> it was a $200 steak? I get it, he's out of touch. We don't need to go off on him. I, I don't think it's moral in today's environmental climate to eat beef. So if I was making a special meal, I would probably took, cook like a $200 chickpea or something like that. But that's just maybe like, it's my own thing, my own cross to bear because I care about the environment. I would probably make like some $200 hummus or something because I respect the earth. You ever see the map of all the private jets leaving the Super Bowl? Makes me feel weird about recycling my cardboard. I can understand that. I mean, every time I go to my in-law's house, I'm like, I'm tempted to the dark side. People think that the dark side is like Sam Smith singing a top 40 song while wearing an outfit that looks weird. 
The dark side for me is every time I go to my in-laws house and they just throw all their recycling into the garbage. And then whenever the big garbage bag gets full, they put it in the can at the end of their driveway. It should seem so easy. I've got like in-unit sorting. I put the cans in one thing and then I got to separate cans from glass. And then I have Tetra packs go in another thing and cardboard goes in another thing. Big boxes go in another thing. I got compost. I got garbage. I... I'm, taking it all down, doing the punishment of Atlas. Like every time I go down to the garbage room, some old lady's looking at me down there. She's like, you put a Tetra pack in the cardboard. That's not cardboard, that's paper. She, they're, every, people are taking turns coming over to me and pushing me over while one person puts their foot behind my leg. So when they push me, I fall down and then they're kicking me in the ribs saying, learn the rules, learn the rules. I think I might just start throwing. I'm not gonna, but... I don't know, maybe I will. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. I guess it depends how mad people would get. My airline is only refunding 30 euros out of 500. Should I do the NL Ticketmaster move and not refund and instead make them have an empty seat? That just sucks. How are they not refunding you more? Like, what? I guess I would need to know the circumstances. Um, but I still have not submitted my information to Ticketmaster. They're trying to refund me for tickets that I, I sold on their platform. They want access to um, my social insurance number. Nah, you can, you can keep that in account, accounts payable for the rest of your tenure as a corporation, which hopefully is mercifully short. I've probably gotten, I would say, 150 emails from Ticketmaster. Uh, and every single one of them is like, hey, to get your money, please submit all of your personal information here. I'll probably do it one day. It's not an insignificant amount of money. But for now, I'm just enjoying that like every time they have to send me one of those emails, it's like another two cents out of their bottom line. And maybe their account like slightly is annoyed. Like like 0.001% is annoyed with them. They, I guess Ticketmaster probably has more than one accountant. But I, I am psychotic. I... I I engage, I'm, I'm, my brain is good, I have sober thought, I'm cognizant of the world around me, but the behaviors that I engage in are crazy sometimes, for sure. Like, I think the average person, like, if, if Kate hears that, she'll probably be like, why don't you just submit your information, and I'm gonna be like, good point. <laughs> But as long as it's only me on the self-talk treadmill, I'm like, yeah, get fucked, Ticketmaster. Bet you fucking like that. Bet you fucking like all your, all your ledgers are all screwed up as a result of me, the criminal mastermind that's kept you from... Yeah, yeah, I bet you... I'm from the future. I'm not your father. I'm not your dad. I knew your dad. Go in oh, I didn't mean to start this one. Hold on. What was that, 10 piece? World's most psychotic man has flawless super auto pets run. He's venting in electrical. I'm swiping my card in admin. We are not the same. <laughs> I don't know. Where that, I don't know. Because you know what happened there? My brain read the comment in chat that was, he's venting in electrical. And then I started, as I started saying it, I was like, how am I going to make this sentence meritous? And I... I just had to apply it to one of the classic meme formats. It's the last day of Dark and Darker. I love Dark and Darker. I'm going to let the haters have a little bit of dopamine, okay? Originally, I was going to play Dark and Darker today. Then I went to YouTube to set some YouTube videos, and I saw how dead on arrival the Dark and Darker videos are. And I said, actually, I won't be playing Dark and Darker today. I think there's a large contingent of people out there who find the game boring to play. Which, and I, I have to be true to myself, okay? How am I being true to myself? Because it's, it's fantasy Tarkov. So I've recognized that it, it lies to you. It, it gets you into delusion. Where you're like, oh my god, I'm like, oh, we killed that skeleton so good. Oh, cracked gold bangle, plus three gold for my net worth. Oh, the dopamine, the dopamine. And if you're watching it as a as a viewer, you're like, skeleton's got some gray boots on him. Skeleton over here. This skeleton has some, it, it has uh, some ringlet gloves. 
There's there's boys over there. Can you buff me? Like I, there's a. I think it's. It might. I'm loving Dark and Darker, but I'm thinking it might have the same sort of thing with Tarkov, where when you play it, your brain is like. But when you're watching it, you're just like, what the hell's going on? This boy's just opening filing cabinets and grabbing like little cans of chocolate milk out of. In your head, that like everything has, because there's such high risk, you're like. And then they're like, video card! You got like a, a $75,000 piece of body armor on it. They're like, $800 GPU, we gotta get out of here! She'll drop her phone, you genius. Okay, she chills like right around here. Just give her a second. She's gotta go upstairs first, then she's gonna come back. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! She did not drop her phone. She didn't drop her phone. She's the leader then? I'm not taking that as a, <laughs> as gospel. Never mind. Congratulations, 47. The leader is eliminated. Sending All right, that was a little surprising, but you should get back to the safe house. I'll it it kind of worked. I do have to say, in this case, the one guy was right. Definitely true. And now we know. If you make the leader slip on a banana peel, or if you make someone slip on a banana peel and they don't drop their phone, it's because they're the leader. That's a great tell. I think we gotta shoot that guy in the head. It is going to make noise, and that's scary. But only because of the bullet impacts. <laughs> Just wait it out, wait it out. <laughs> Might have to take the camera first. It's not silenced. It has the... Hold on. Abu Shanab. No silencer dog. Tarky Parky Fam. Not silenced. Monox Gas. It's not silenced. Noah underscore tab. Explain yourselves. I have all three of your chat windows open. You have one minute. I'm just joking, but don't do it again. Don't ever think you're smarter than us. We're all stupid here. Uh -huh. This is bad. Hey, I'm gonna pop up if you don't. Get out of here. Okay, first objective already completed. They see me? It's all right. It's all right. We just need an outfit. One of my targets is right here. Did they see this? It's me, James Batty. Close the fucking door. Close the damn door, dude. I think they're close enough to possibly see me if I do this. I got a bolt. You shouldn't risk ornamental gear on missions. Then what the fuck do you do with it? If you can't take it out on missions, then what the fuck is the point? Just look at it in a, in a digital glass case like I'm living my whole life in the metaverse? Is it, is it all loot? You know, if you, if you lose it, you lose it? 
Okay, these guys are not that sussed. So watch this. Get urinated on. I've been recorded by a security camera. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear within the syndicate. They couldn't see that. They might have thought I was just whispering a little sweet nothing in his ear. I have to leave no witnesses, though. I have to leave no witnesses. Don't set off the fire alarm. Ooh, he almost sussed me. Dude, he's wearing the red boots! Hitman, new TikTok, Hitman predicts red boots 2023. I got to steal his drip. There's, there's absolutely no doubt. Can one. Can too. I need those boots. <laughs> oh, Let's go. I gotta say, he is not pulling them off. Not in the slightest. It's audacious. I'll give him that. It's audacious. It's all right. We'll catch him on the second pass. Actually, why don't I just poison you with a syringe? Okay. Then you'll walk into this bathroom and I'll just, I'll ice you. Crime notice, by the way. Probably put that away. <laughs> but he's got to be crapping himself, right? No, he just pulled. Okay, hide. We're going to hide in here. They're not, they don't know where I am. They have no clue. And guess what? It's because I'm not even me anymore. I could be anybody. Don't come over by me. Don't come in here. <laughs> There's a little thing in, in the United States of America. There's a little thing called privacy. You would be well to look it up, bucko. You listen, I know you got a pension or whatever. I make 15 times your salary. We need to secure the area. I need you to get By President's Day, I've made what you make in one lifetime. So if you think I'm going to, listen, listen here, buddy. If you think I'm going to let you come and boss me around, it's called Wall Street, not Security Street. So just know your place, okay? When you see red candles and green candles, that's my domain. If I see somebody's stealing 12 eggs from the grocery store, I'll come give you a call, okay? It's a damn mess in here, man. You guys ever hear of like feng shui? Interior design? Anything along those lines? I'm not welcome. It's a it's just a warehouse full of locked doors. Am I a cool enough guard to get past here? This area has restricted access. Of course it does. That's my bad. He's gonna next time he sees me hanging around where I'm not supposed to, he's gonna put a bullet in my head. It's a little much. A lever, a coin, also known as kind of like a briefcase. For trespassing, I know. When's the next Costco run? Fantastic. I'm, I'm asking myself the same question. Honestly, I might find myself just making a, a special trip because we bought a toy at the Costco and the toy is already broken. I don't blame Costco for that. I blame whatever, you know, manufacturer made the product in the first place. Um, 
And then people were telling Kate in Kate's chat that the Costco return policy is so good. Like, I'm always worried that if I return something to a store, they're going to be like, no, I'm not taking this. You're trying to commit a crime here. Go die. But someone in Kate's chat said their friend returned a TV to Costco two years after they bought it. And it wasn't even in the box. And they just, uh, like, without asking any questions, they were like, oh, yeah, we'll take it. Why did they return it? I don't know, probably to get the money for it, <laughs> if I had to guess. Oh yeah, I gotta get that Peppa Pig tablet thing. It's cursed. It's like constantly being pressed by ghosts. And I took it apart, but like I couldn't do it. But I think I gotta, I took out the battery, but I think um, I gotta take like the whole thing out. What's wrong with the oranges? There's nothing wrong. Yesterday I tried to eat it, but just tasted like onions. Oh. So I couldn't finish the uh, the oranges because it tastes like onions. We got this um this Peppa Pig uh, me reader toy from Costco yesterday, and um you know baby she loved it because she loves Peppa Pig, and um she dropped it many many times on the floor. But I was like, who cares? You know, it's for kids. It's for babies, and like uh, it's made out of plastic. It ain't gonna break. Like, she's not smashing it. And then, I don't know what caused it, but it's like, they're buttons, but these buttons are being, like, automatically pressed. But it's not like buttons are being pressed by automatically. It's just, it's a singular button that's keep getting, like, activated. And it's like, Peppa Pig. Tiny town. Or something like that. And it's like, it's so annoying. And, like, she loves this tablet thingy. So she went to bed with it whole night through. Peppa Pig. Tiny village. After three minutes, Peppa Pig. Tiny village. Peppa Pig. Tiny village. Literally throughout the whole night. I'm not even joking. From, from what, was it, like, 9.30? 9.30 till, uh... Eight in the morning. Peppa Pig. Tiny village. <laughs> it was driving me crazy. And I thought she was pressing it the whole night through. By placing her face on it or something, you know? But I didn't want to take it away from her. So I was like, you know, in the morning, I'm going to check it out. And then I was like, nobody's pressing it. I'm, I just like left it next to me and just kept like the buttons are being pressed. Despite no one's pressing it. And it just kept going like, Peppa Pig, tiny village. And I was just like, stop it. And I took it apart thinking maybe like the button was being, I don't know, like maybe something was pressing the button or something. But it's not. It's just, uh, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. And I just, there's no off button either, which is a terrible design. I, why, why does it have no off button? I don't know. So I just had to take out the whole battery. I just took out the battery. And then, like, I was like, maybe if I take the battery out and then restart it, and maybe it will be okay. Take the battery out, wait a five minutes, put the battery back. Peppa Pig, tiny village. And I'm just like, ah! But I don't know. I'm like, but she loves this thing. And so, as soon as she comes back, she's going to ask for it. And now I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm actually... I might actually have to send Ryan back to Costco and get the same toy again. Because I cannot live with uh, Peppa Pig. Tiny village. Like, all night long again. Here, Chad, I'll show you. I just put the battery back in. I'm not pressing anything. Doing nothing. Let's see if it, if it does anything. Oh, maybe it's okay. I don't know. Maybe while I'm playing the game, it's just gonna go like Peppa Pig, tiny village. I'm scared. I just put the battery back in. I didn't. I didn't push any button. If it. If it. Oh God. It's a tiny land, not tiny village. Dude, I'm. See, I didn't press any button. It's just. It's just keep going. Chat. See. It's this thing. You see, oh my god, why is the light? The light, look at the light. 
I feel like I'm in men in men in the black. Just I'm just gonna hold it, okay? I'm not pressing any buttons. These these are the buttons. I just took the battery. I mean, I just I just uh I just put the battery and then it just uh it just after like three minutes it goes like tiny land. Peppa Pig, tiny land. See, you see how the light is still on? It's supposed to turn off on its own when I'm not pressing the button. But it's, it's just like, it's devil. It's haunted. I'm just holding it. I'm just holding it, dude. It's gonna go off. I'm gonna prove it on stream. What if it's a friendly ghost? Why why does the friendly ghost wanna go Peppa? Oh! Oh! The light turned off? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the power of stream. Didn't push a button. Peppa Pig. Tiny light. Didn't push a let didn't push a button. I'm just holding it like this. The lights back on. <laughs> Give us a sign. Give us a sign. <laughs> Are you here? Are you with us? <laughs> what the fuck throw it at? <laughs> it's okay guys. I'm 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 confirmed. I'm basically a priest. <laughs> I'm I'm baptized and confirmed. I must be able to like shush the ghost away. I'm just like I'm just holding it like it's a tombstone. Cause it's like these are not buns, these are speakers. These these are these are the bun the, the, the Pippa Pig characters and like the, the book logos. Telling you, it's gonna go off, cause it went off the whole night through. Being gone in the name of onion. I I I became an onion knight. What if you repair it and live on stream? I tried. I took I took this thing apart. I I took this thing whole thing apart. It was very cheaply made plastic toy, and it was like. There was nothing wrong with it, other than, I guess, like, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't just go like, oh, it doesn't work, I'm gonna return it. It's more like, I opened it, I opened it up, I opened it. Jesus Christ! I, I did also, I tried to do the whack. I tried to do the whack. It did not work. Gonna go off, I tell you. I proved it. Let's go. Three times. See, it's like almost three minutes, right? It's almost every three minutes. And it's not like and like if you push the button, it works. Like other other buttons work, but even after I press any other buttons, it still always goes to this one, the Susie Sheep, and it goes Peppa Pig, Tiny Land. Like none of the other ones, uh, it does not activate. It only only this one, Susie Sheep. And then there's no off button. You would think like maybe at least I can if there's like an off switch, I can just press it off so that, you know, I don't have to hear it the whole night through. There there ain't no buttons. As you can see, no buttons. Stupid design. <laughs> and it's just plastic bag for the battery and that's it.
I pulled out the battery, but now Ryan said he's gonna return it, and so I should just keep it on because it's part of the part of the thing. And now I'm just gonna hear it the whole night through. I work at Costco. Someone tried to return a bouquet of flowers to me last night. Were they used? I think if they weren't used, you should honor the return request. But if, if they had been smelled by the intended receiver, then, I mean, those flowers are never going to be the same ever again. Please, please. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. It's proximity! Run! No, 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 no. He's coming. He's, he didn't die. Imagine that. I put your gun away for a second. Maybe try that one again. Curse you, Tuck Tucks. <laughs> He's so small and translucent. I'm, I gotta wait for the red outline to get all the way out here. He's coming out. He wants the world to know. He's gonna let it show. I'm out of here. Well done, seven. Get back to the safe house. I'll be in touch. <laughs> I find it hard to believe with the amount of explosions that just went off that I didn't get the collateral, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm I'm honestly just happy to have made it out of there. Oh, you did get the collateral? No, I didn't get the collateral. I need to get in there. Am I welcome in here? Whatever, man. Nope. You're not walking through here. Wrong kind of no wrong kind of camo. That's my bed. Twins, Basil. Sorry, sir, I can't let you through. I can't go anywhere. I'm going to have to live the rest of my life here. Well, okay, if I could just see his tells. The thing is, if he's the target, I know exactly what to do. I just drop my duck right here. I wait till he walks by with his assassin. I blow it up and I go out the other I go out the front door. But I have to make sure that it's him. Can you dump a body down the well? I think this is my my time. I just got to make sure this person's not going to walk over this way. Slightly annoyed, we'll admit to that. Not more, though. Keeping it in check. Deep breaths. In through the nose. Wait, just waiting them out. We're just waiting them out. Everybody chill. Everybody chill. Wasn't my moment. It's discipline, something I, I, I didn't used to have. Remember, this is this could be the easiest mission of all time. One outfit. Go in, kill the guy. If he's the right guy, you just leave. Other guard is gone. How long do you smoke a cigarette for? What, like eight seconds? Come over hit this way. Okay. You piece of crap. Dude, get a life. Why are you just hanging out? As a, as a North American, this game seems so crazy to me. Why is it that there's so many citizens just enjoying their lives? Don't you have an endless stream of, of like work hours to knock out? Why is your work-life balance so high, so good? 
I don't, I'm going to guess that it's like a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. You're just enjoying a, a, a cigarette out here. It's probably like 2 p.m. Shouldn't you be in traffic right now? Just wait. I know it's you got to have patience, okay? You got to have patience. Takes so much self control to like as soon as I see ice him in the chat to not just ice him, man. <laughs> Disgusting habit. All this just to get a guard uniform. No, I'm not leaving. I think I can get him. It's just annoying. I'm just thinking about Costco. Oh, man. Best poutine in the city? I'm not going to blow them up with a duck, okay? This is the... I, I want to go quiet, okay? If I could just chill. If it takes a minute... Go as quiet as possible. If I, I shouldn't, there should never be a reason I have to shoot both of them. I might have to shoot one of them. Would you take a Costco sponsorship? They would never sponsor me because it would cut into their margins. The marketing budget of Costco, they don't need to hire influencers. All they do is make a high quality product at a fair price and keep their members happy. And then the word of mouth causes them to what? to grow. Possible intruder. Sweeping area. Over. I'm gonna shit my pants. Man, I swear these sort of things happen more to me than anybody else. I don't wanna say I'm cursed or anything, but really? I mean, come on. Dump them real quick. I can't believe it worked. <laughs> and give me back my freaking scalpel. Not bad, huh? It's can I get some uh eye occlusion? I cannot see. Am I welcome down here? He's eating! He loves it. I just don't want the assassin to be mad at me. Is he coming? He is coming. Dude, we should we should kill the assassin and take his pistol. That's high tech. What do you mean combat? Oh, son of a bitch. Take out your gun. Well, this is not my ideal place for a shootout. <laughs> Who saw me? I love that people keep typing, I can't feel my face, because they type I can't with uh, auto or the autocomplete on. 
I kept, I was wondering for like a week. I was like, why do people keep just typing? I can't feel my face. 90 meters. Assassin nearby? Is such a thing even possible? Snail meat, no bones? <laughs> Honestly, like, this is a, the theme of our third campaign. Excuse me? Messy missions, but I, just like one thing went wrong and we recovered. None of the missions have been perfect silent assassin, but every single one of the missions we, we made it. We didn't let our heart rate spike too high when things went wrong, and now we've made it further than we've ever made it before. Well, well, well. You idiot. <laughs> Get choked. Now, we got time. Drag him. Dump him. Give me the moon shoes. This is how you know IT sticks together. He's got to be like the only co-worker in this entire game that recognizes when you steal his co-worker's clothes. Everybody else is just like, what took you so long? I have literally nothing against you at all. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm the I'm the CTO. I know I'm only 21 years old. You would think, why could I be the CEO at such a young age? It's because this is a Web3 company, okay? My resume was an NFT. I graduated top of my class from my high school. You have a problem with me? You have a problem with me? Take it up with me in the metaverse. I own a, a villa that overlooks the digital Mediterranean. It's not the, what are we at, 145? I'm so tempted to throw nitroglycerin at his face and then <laughs> hide in the body drawer. <laughs> Syndicate member eliminated. Well done, 47. There's one. Now we just wait. Okay, there's the one taken out, and it was not good at all. Now we know we got the lady who's always on the stairs. Like it's not the right time to get a safe. And we know you, we got you. You're coming down the stairs. Then you also, I, I know, I know how to get you. I know exactly how to get you. Hello, Keanu Reeves. I know exactly how to get you. We're going to follow you up this secret staircase right here, and then we're get on the staircase, we're going to shoot you in the head with a silence pistol. Just wait for him. I'm in. I'm out. Excellent work, 47. You've spread fear within the Syndicate. And then... Old Reliable. <laughs> Am I able to just... Like, how do I know if I can... Oh, I can open it. My objective's not complete. But I can open it. Okay. So I could shoot her and then just walk out, right? Just get your angle. You really look like her. Have a good day. Textbook. What are you gonna do? Shoot me? Well, well, well.
not clean. Excuse me, the middle kill was clean. The first kill was extremely messy. The <laughs> Perfect shooter too! Look at all these check marks, man. 8,600 XP, 21 minutes. 4,000 man coins, still pretty good. I mean, that mission was a huge success. We only got shot at once, which is not typical for me. <laughs> Those early, you're not wrong, by the way. Those early campaigns are so much easier. One target, you just like literally blast them next to the exfil and walk out. Well, my money. Is the stock market just a vessel to lose money? Yeah, if you got paper hands. <laughs> Luckily, I have diamond hands. Level four diamond hand, Jack Bogle Vanguard total stock market index holder. I may never sell them. I may, I may die with them in my possession. Oh, you sold stocks to fund your retirement? Weak. I worked myself to the bone every day. I'm, I'm holding past mortem. Rigor mortis is setting in. You're, you, you can, the hedgies can pry my VTI out of my hands. With the power of the occult energy on the dark pool, okay? Catwoman to home alone. So really, you're figuring out, listen, we're probably not connecting to Daniel Stern. We're probably not connecting to Joe Pesci. Although I suppose we could. All you got to do is connect to Robert De Niro somewhere. We're probably not connecting to Macaulay Culkin. I really think we're probably connecting to Catherine O'Hara is my pick. But let's, let's see how we would do this. All right, I'm immediately lost. <laughs> for, for the Joe Pesci connection, you would say, well, hold on. You were in the Matrix. Was Joe Pesci in the Matrix? Joe Pesci. Wait, what movie was Joe Pantoliano in that I was so surprised? It's like Lambert Wilson. Give me the Matrix Reloaded. Take me to Keanu Reeves. Take me to the original Matrix. How many Matrixes has this dude been in, dude? Come on. Take me to Joe Pantoliano. Eggs. Bad boys for life. We're trying to get to Robert De Niro. All right, I'm depressed looking at this. I'm sorry. I'd like to apologize to Joe Pantoliano. I shouldn't be here. This is for his agent to see, not for me to see. Obviously, Memento. Also, Carrie Ann Moss. Taxman, The Matrix. U.S. freaking Marshalls. Natural. I'm too far down. I'm lost. I'm lost. So now we're going to meme it up a little bit. We're going to go Daredevil. We're going to go Colin Farrell. We're going to connect through the Banshees of Inna Sharon because I haven't seen it yet. Just to connect through a movie that makes chat say based. Then we're going to go to Brendan Gleeson. And now we're trapped in England. We got to find a, you know what? There you go to an ensemble film, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. That gets you out of there. Now you're going to tell me we can't get to Robert De Niro from here. It's not as much of an ensemble film as I thought it was. A lot of semi-noteworthy actors in this, for sure. I mean, you could always connect to Tom Waits. And then, was Tom Waits not in Mystery Men? He is in Mystery Men. So then you go Mystery Men, and you get to Ben Stiller, which takes you to meet the parents, or meet the Fockers, to Robert De Niro, to Casino, to Joe Pesci, to Home Alone. Dude! We got everything in here. The Matrix, Colin Farrell, Tom Waits... Pretty good, Fokker. Nine's kind of a long way, though. Quintuple bogey. Oh, dude! Sharon Stone is just in Casino. That's a very good point. Sharon Stone, Casino, Joe Pesci. You don't even need to go through De Niro. Okay. Okay. 
we, we got one guess the game. We did like 20 guess the games yesterday. We exhausted the back catalog. You got to admit, it was some, there were some based connections, though. Dude, this looks so familiar to me. This looks so familiar to me, but I skip first. Metacritic score of 89. I skip. I'm going to guess. Wait, no, I'm not going to skip. This is Final Fantasy 8. Originally on the PC. I right, skip. This is System Shock 2. Released in 2020. Oh, this is Devil Daggers. Is it Metal Hellsinger? It's one of those ones where you shoot to the rhythm. It's like a roguelite. You shoot to the rhythm or something like Okay, apparently it's called Hyper Demon. I'll be honest. I don't know this one. I don't know Hyper Demon. It's the sequel to Devil Daggers. Okay, so they basically scammed me. They basically, they got mad that I solved so many in a row and they were like, oh, we're going to have to resort to cheating. This is... It's Assassin's Creed 1. Metacritic score of 92. This is Mass Effect 1. It's originally on the PC. This is Unreal Tournament. This is Quake 3 Arena. Shit's fucking Tribes 2. It's Quake 2. Is Unreal Tournament? I knew that. <laughs> I had Unreal Championship on the Xbox 3, uh, the original Xbox, back when there was only like four games that you could use with Xbox Live. So you could catch my ass playing MotoGP and Unreal Championship. And uh, Whacked. Honestly, I kind of miss the days when there were so few online games. Because it funneled everybody on the console into, like, these experiences that everybody was playing. You had friends, you played Rainbow Six Three with them. You moved to Project Gotham Racing 2. You moved to Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge. You moved to um, Full Spectrum Warrior. You moved out of Full Spectrum Warrior back to Project Gotham Racing 2. Halo 2 comes out, that's all you play for two years. I can't tell if I've eaten too many pretzels lately or if I haven't eaten enough pretzels. But I'm telling you, my pretzel level is a little off. I can't tell if it's too much or not enough. I've definitely hit the point, though, on these pretzels, and we still got, like, at least 1.2 kilograms left, where I wish they weren't filled with peanut butter. I've become fully corrupted by the pretzel. I want, I, even though they're filled with peanut butter, I want them to just be filled with more pretzel. I normally like things filled with peanut butter, but I'm like, I want a, I want a full pretzel now. I just want pretzels. You gonna find another person to refer for more pretzels? No, because then I have to have a conversation with somebody. I'm probably just going to finish these pretzels and then never buy them again because they're like the worst food on earth for you. Like, they're really bad. <laughs> Do not look... Some of you guys are cool. Do not turn over your bag of Snyder's pretzels. Better than potato chips? No, not even close. Like, twice as bad. Maybe you would eat less because they're a little denser, but maybe not because they're tasty. I don't know. All right, I'm going to send you over to Kate's stream. I'll be back tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back on Friday, too. I don't know. I just I lost track of time. Tomorrow, we have a chance to possibly beat the campaign. And I'll see you then.
My horny ass could never read the stream title. You mean, Chad doesn't know that he's getting hot at the Costco shop. Doing something unholy. Mom sat back while she's eating it. He be popping it. Yeah, he do be checking out slowly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> At the Costco shop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> do I have super sensitive sinuses? I don't think so, but then maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what the super sensitive it is, but I think my I think it's sensitive. It's a lot more sensitive than Ryan, let me tell you that much. Holy moly, my dude can smell anything. I'll be like I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna throw up it smells so bad. What the heck? And then Ryan's like I don't smell anything. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Smell this. It smells so bad. And then he was like, I don't know. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Like, he's he sometimes cannot smell. Maybe not sometimes, more like more often. I'm I'm not eating any more onions. I finally was, like, I got the onion out of me yesterday. And I slept very well last night. It was it was a very happy day. I or night, I should say. I I slept very, very well. I was very happy. I was so blessed. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. But then like before my Japanese lesson, I got a little bit of stomach ache. That's when uh you know, I didn't get the onion out of my system. It was in like it was turning into a poop. So I was a little bit late to my Japanese lesson because of the tummy ache. And then my Japanese teacher was like, she's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, um, I got like dared into eating raw onion. So I ate raw onion. So I'm like, I saw I had a stomach ache. <laughs> That's why I was late. And she looked at me like, she's like, I'm not judging you, but I'm judging you. That look, like, she looked at me. She looked at me like that. She wanted to say, like, why did you eat raw onion, like an apple? But then she knew it's better not to ask. But, like, you know, like, you know the, you know the, it was in her eyes, like. Is she okay? Like, why is she eating raw onion like an apple? <laughs> What's wrong with this girl? That's why Ryan read popping it today as a poop in it. She do be pooping it. <laughs> it's true though. Honestly, it made it better instead of popping it. Swedish Aladdin. <laughs> I can show you the fjords. Colt Boulard with lingam berries. Henrik Daniel, Sudin Elias, Peterson, Albert Sandin, a whole new world. Sorry, 